Hi pals. I think no one is surprised that 2021 is still not, still not going too well, is it really? So like January 5th or 6th, the UK finally went into its lockdown again, the third one. Who knows, but Anyway, it is relevant to what this video is about. I spent a lot of 2020 reading to pretend I didn't exist. <laughs> and so 2021, I just hopped straight back into that. I did a post at the end of 2020. I'm trying to remember what year I'm in and what year I was in. It's just very difficult, I know. At the end of 2020, where I wrote up a list of uh, 30 to short books to read to boost your goodreads challenge goals and it was kind of like a you can use this at the end of a year to you know catch up or you can use this to start off your next year strong so that's what i'm doing um low-key been making my way through that list the ones that i haven't read yet because half of them are ones i've not read half of them are ones i have already read I'm currently like halfway through January right now, so I'll do an update a bit later on. But basically, this is just like a... I read as many books as I can in January. Um, we all know that I have many books I already own, whether it's ebooks or physical books. Some I've had for decades, and that I want to try and get through some of them before I purchase any new books. So that's what this video is basically doing, is me trying to read as many of those books as possible. I can tell you I have officially read eight books and DNF2. So that's ten books off of my original TBR. Also, I haven't been able to have a haircut in a while, so <laughs> my undercut has grown out. And I'm continuing to persist in trying to read as many books as possible in January. And I just wanted to see how many... I managed. Guess that's it really. We'll wait and see until I reach February, I guess. <clears throat> hey pals, it's me again with my January wrap up. I don't really do wrap ups of like, at least not monthly wrap ups. But this one's kind of special to me, you know. Um, also, I'm wearing different glasses because my other glasses are hurting my head at the moment. Like, they're really, like, here. Today we're wearing these. I thought they were a look with my look. Where I am emulating a grungy, metal head version of myself I wanted to be as a teenager at one point. Because I'm also just vibing with some, like, heavier metal kind of music at the moment. So that's who I am today, personality disorder who. But this wrap up, basically I finished my Goodreads goal. I set it the same as last year, 12, 12 books. And um, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think I would reach it in the first month of 2021, but also, you know, here we are. So. I've now bumped up to 25 for now, we'll see how I go with that, which is why I wanted to do my January wrap up because I fucking, I finished Goodreads, I finished my Goodreads goal. I read way more books than I thought I'd read. I got through way more books than I thought I would because like there are a few other books I also DNF'd, which I'm proud of myself for because at least I gave the books a go, decided they weren't for me and they are either going to be sold or donated, you know? So my first book of the year was Even If We Break. Which I realised I balanced my phone on and it's not here. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Honestly, the audacity. Even if we break. I did this in a video recently and I was like, oh, this is actually like a vibe. So that was my first book of the year. My friend bought it for me for Christmas and I was like, nice, I'm definitely going to enjoy this book. going to read it first read of the year and it was and i i read a couple of the first chapters 
like separately alone they were like it was slow build then once I really started getting into the plot of the book oh holy fuck holy fuck um I've realized I really enjoy mystery <laughs> both television and books so this is like a murder mystery basically about a group of teenagers who enjoy playing tabletop games a mood also a lot of representation that I really enjoyed in this so there are two disabled characters in multiple different ways so there's one character who is autistic and has an injury from a car accident which has basically left her with like a long-standing chronic condition um there is a trans guy who uses crutches to get around he doesn't technically specify what he has but from the language used it's hi Layla it's a hypermobile kind of disorder so like same I was very seen by a bunch of these characters and I really liked his character a lot big mood goth trans disabled we love as I was saying, there's also a non-binary character in this book. Fantastic. We love Mwah. Um There are two cis bisexual characters. Fun. We love it. So that was like a maybe 4.5 out of 5 because the ending was a bit uh, dragged out, kind of dull. Either should have ended a lot earlier or should have ended differently but quicker. You know, otherwise it was a really great book and I really enjoyed what watching it, reading it. The next book I read was the Psychic... <sighs> Hello. The next book I read was the Psychic Case Files by Tony Stockwell. I mean, like, it was an interesting read. I skipped a whole chapter because it was about um, Jack the Ripper and I've honestly had enough of that. <laughs> I enjoy a lot of true crime, YouTube podcasts, documentaries. I have, I've heard it all. And this is a pretty old book. I don't think uh, I was going to learn anything new. So I skipped that chapter. Maybe another chapter as well that was kind of boring. But there we go. You know, it wasn't literary genius, was, but it was kind of interesting just reading about a psychic medium's experiences, I guess, uh, related to true crime, um, which is something I do find very interesting is when, like, I don't know, police or private detectives use a psychic medium or something like that to help solve cases that I would like to read more of so I mean I'd give it maybe like a three because it yeah it wasn't amazing kept me entertained short read you know then I read Bridget Jones the first the first diary first Bridget Jones diary so I mean I have watched <laughs> these films so many times <laughs> I, I was just kind of like, I just want to know what the fuck, <laughs> where this came from. It was interesting to find out that it actually originally was a newspaper column. Then was turned into a book, then turned into the films. Um, I do have to say there wasn't enough Mark Darcy in it for me. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, there were differences, but not, for the most part not enough that it was that interesting then that's a really weird bit at the end so like if you haven't read this book and want to read it but don't want spoilers so skip ahead a bit but like Bridget's mum is dating some weird guy who uh well it turns out they were basically stealing like, other people's money so he's a criminal and the mum was in on it that was a bit unbelievable and mental to be completely fucking honest so i mean i'd probably give this like a two or a three it was okay you know it wasn't amazing it wasn't literary genius i felt seen a few times because she also has a, an english degree and cannot spell but otherwise don't don't really care i might read the second one because i would like to just, like read more about mark darcy and I heard the third one is where Mark Darcy dies, so <laughs> that's my thought process for that. The next few on my list were ebooks, so I cannot show you, or like I've already gotten rid of them. So the next one is Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher. I have been recommended by a few people to read this. 
uh, like ASAP because I've been talking about it on my blog a little bit. I had a few people like, you should read it, it's so good, it was great, and it's really short as well. Um, and it was a pretty good time. Icon, Libra Icon. Libra Icon with a mood disorder. I mean, I know I've got a personality disorder, not a mood disorder, but bipolar and BPD have a lot of similarities. So I had a great time reading that, to be completely honest. Um, even though there are some that's like a bit crazy and tragic and not super fun, but like I enjoyed how she wrote. Yeah, I don't know. I read her postcards from the edge. Um, I have a few other books of hers on my list to possibly read. I think it was something about the princess. I don't know. I don't know. But that was a good one. I'd say it's like a four or five. I read The End of Eddie, which I did have the physical book of. I had this arc for fucking ages because I got given it by a lecturer at uni for performing in their like creative writing performance things. So I picked this book up because it sounded like it would be interesting. And when I was looking it up, apparently people fucking loved this book. I hated it. It was awful. There are no trigger warnings. I didn't think to even look in, look for warnings elsewhere on the internet. He is maybe a couple of years older than me, this author. So that makes it worse. Basically, it's about a gay kid growing up in north of France, I can't remember, France somewhere, in a really poor area. So the trigger warnings I would give it are things from just straight up abuse, homophobic bullying, underaged stuff, which also is probably considered rape, incest, no happy ending. Real, real life as well. So. I managed to get through it, but it was probably the worst book I've read in my life. Wasn't really a fan of the writing and just uh, the whole thing was awful and I would not have picked it up if I knew what this book was about. Um, and I don't, I don't, why is queer suffering groundbreaking and amazing when it comes to like fucking straight people reading it? Like, why do you love to read? suffering like that so um yeah don't fucking read it i don't really know what to do with the book like i, I think i'm currently just going to donate it but i i kind of want to burn it it's awful then i <laughs> skipping on then i read talking as fast as i can by i think it's La lauren graham who played lorelei gilmore in the gilmore girls the mum i enjoyed a lot of it the first half of the book was good and interesting i really enjoyed her talking about her past of becoming an actor and a bit about her family and running through the Gilmore Girls the series was like interesting and some of the bits about um when they did the reboot thing but there were some chapters that were definitely just filler and the ending was so long boring and drawn out like it was just filler I blush it, it she ran out of things to say <laughs> to be honest. So I'd say maybe a three because I did enjoy the first half of it. Um, and she also talked about writing her fiction book, which sounded interesting. I think I would be interested in reading her fiction book, but I mean, her memoir, non-fiction or whatever, just kind of felt half assed to be honest. It wasn't great, you know? I then read Naruto one through five. Well, it was a reread, obviously. Um, I'm going to go into like more details in my upcoming manga reading marathon, where I am basically just filming and putting together all the manga I've read, reread. But generally, I realise I still actually really like Naruto. <laughs> like, I think Naruto was my first anime and manga that I kind of fell in love with and it still has a special place to the point that I may not get rid of these books and actually kind of want to continue reading some of them but like I'm just I'm just mad because I know how it ends and it's not gay no one's gay even though they are definitely gay if you watch or read this show series like they are gay 
book one or two, episode one or two, Naruto and Sasuke kiss, bro. Bro, you cannot tell me they're straight. You cannot tell me they're straight. So I did really enjoy them actually, so I'm a little bit pissed that um I've reignited a fire for an anime and manga that I loved but put down for many reasons. <laughs> if you could help me find some good fan fiction though, I'm here for Naruto and Sasuke and Kiba and Shikamaru and Kakashi and Iruka. Hit me up with some of that shit. I am here for it. And the last book I actually read, if I can get it off the pile, is Arata Arata the Legend. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I talked about this book in a video or blog. It's not what I thought it was. The plot is not, is not what the back makes it sound like. Oh, okay, I am reading through it now and I'm like, oh, okay, now I can understand what it's telling me. <laughs> it definitely sounded like um, a boy and a girl switching places and being each other, which is just not, not the plot, but it is fun. I'm not sure if I'll continue reading it. I'm not sure I liked it that much. But I mean, we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? And then I have my list of books I DNF'd, which include... The Mysterious Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The copy of that I have is literally maybe 150 pages and I could not get through it. It was so boring, so long. Not what I thought this book was going to be at all. I mean, it's pretty gay though. There are definitely some gay moments. Um, I've noticed that a lot of actually classic fiction is kind of gay. So I could not get through that book. I tried, I fell asleep in the middle of it, so I just gave up. I also have Dark to Light, which was a poetry book I bought just randomly off of Hive. It's not good. <laughs> it kind of is just someone who enjoys writing poetry and self-published. Like I know art is subjective so you know you can have your own opinion but I just think it's bad and very amateur so um I also could not get through that and that was not many pages maybe 100 pages I could not couldn't do it and then I DNF'd an entire series Mega Tokyo I only have one through five I don't know how many they had but it was a web comic apparently <sighs> oh my god it was just like <sighs> It's just like white men doing what they want in other countries in Japan, you know? It's just a white white men white men do what they want without consequence, you know? Like white men just do things <laughs> for the lols. And it's boring. I don't know how I got through five books last, like ten years ago. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so boring. Yeah, I couldn't get through book one of it, so I was like, okay. DNFing that entire series, so I end up DNFing seven books, reading twelve, and like so, all in all, I got through nineteen books in a month, which you know ain't bad considering my twenty twenty one TBR was like one hundred and sixty books. I have bought a couple of books since I made that video too because I have some gift cards that I don't want to use on anything else, to be honest. I don't need anything else. I only really need books, but at least, at least books will bring me something, you know? But, you know, at least I can say I got through these books. I am getting rid of The End of Eddie. I think I'll probably also get rid of The Psychic Case Files and Bridget Jones. I just don't see myself reading either of those again. Um, but so far this manga has made it for another day and we'll see if i ever decide to actually continue any of the manga i mean i have decided i would like to but that means that having to buy more books and I'm, I'm not ready for that commitment right now and i don't like reading manga online you know i don't i was never one of those people who read web comics very often the only ones i read was check please 
Um, oh, I just bit my tongues. And Eerie Crest. And Check Please is now books. Eerie Crest is not. But I don't... I couldn't follow the plot of Eerie Crest. So if anyone can help me figure that out, I couldn't I couldn't follow the plot very well. It didn't seem like it was particularly a coherent story. So, But I really enjoyed the art and I enjoyed the characters. There we are. Thanks for watching my January wrap up. I completed my Goodreads goal. Let's see how long it takes me to get to my next Goodreads goal of 25 books. I only need to read 13, so I could logistically maybe do it in a month. If you go to my 2021 TBR video or like one of my blog posts, I don't know, I'll link some in the description. If you go to any of those videos or blogs, have a watch or a read, tell me which books you think I should read next because I struggle to choose sometimes and especially when I start getting into a slump which I did towards the end of this month. I need a hand. <laughs> I need a hand choosing, uh, being convinced what books I should try to read and considering I have spoken about many of these books I haven't read yet a million and one times across my blog and my YouTube, you know I just need someone to help me. <laughs> so go into the description, either go to the video or the blog post have a look. You can come back here or you can just leave a comment on those but just let me know what I should read next because I need help. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to my channel. I mostly book content these days but I do also make stuff about disabled chronic illness life um, and queer trans stuff you know because we love it. We love being a, a marginalised group. And leave a comment down below. How are you doing this year? What's your favourite read of January? You know, just let's start a convo. I am so alone. I'll see you next week. Bye.